One of the challenges with having all of these mobile devices is that we need some way to ensure connectivity back to our home office. We need to make sure the information we're sending to our home office is protected. We want to be sure it's secure and encrypted. We would use a VPN or remote access connection to be able to do that so that we would set up through the software in our laptop or our mobile device a way to encrypt, create a tunnel to send encrypted data all the way to something like a VPN concentrator that would then pull it off of the tunnel, decrypt the information, and then pass it through internally in the clear so that all of our devices can communicate back. And of course, the process does the same thing in the other direction. Traffic is sent in the clear to the VPN concentrator that then encrypts it, puts it onto the tunnel, and provides it back to your laptop. A common way to set up a communication like this is through something called an SSL VPN. It stands for Secure Sockets Later VPN. And it's called that because it at least initially uses the SSL protocol to get the tunnel built and have communication go back and forth. Because this is a very common protocol to use, we'll very often have firewalls that already allow SSL VPN communication. We usually see this using very simple software on a device. And it's usually taking place from a client that's talking back to a site. In fact, it could be multiple clients. It could be hundreds of clients that are running this SSL VPN software. And they're all communicating back to a series of VPN concentrators back in a central place. This is used to not only authenticate users, because we can use things like certificates or passwords to be able to make sure that the end user that's coming in has the proper credentials. But we can also have this data encrypted across this particular tunnel. Depending on the SSL VPN software you're using, you may be able to run everything in a web browser. Your SSL VPN connection may have encrypted all the way up to the VPN concentrator, and then it proxies the communication internally. That means you don't need a client on your workstation, or maybe you need a very small client running on your workstation to be able to accomplish this. That also means you can run it on many different operating systems. There are usually SSL VPN clients for Windows devices, Mac OS 10 devices, Linux devices devices, iOS devices, Android devices, anything that's mobile or anything that you would need that encrypted communication, there's probably a client you can use to have that SSL VPN connectivity. Another way to set up this tunnel from one point to the other is to use something like point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, or PPTP. It's important to keep in mind that this tunneling protocol only creates the tunnel. It only creates the connection for this information that might go through. It doesn't do any type of encryption or decryption as part of PPTP. If you're running this type of tunnel, you then would also have to run some type of encryption along with it. So it's not like your SSL VPN, where it's connecting to the tunnel and then doing the encryption also. The PPTP is just one part of the entire equation. PPTP also can use different authentication methods to make sure that you're able to build this tunnel. And those authentication methods are using some type of encryption. A very common one is MSCHAP version 2. This is Microsoft Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. It's integrated into Windows. So you can use your normal domain login to be able to gain access and build that tunnel. You might also be using something like EAPTLS. That stands for Extensible Authentication Protocol Transport Layer Security. It's a way to authenticate and have that information also encrypted as that username and password is going over the network. At that point, you need to encrypt the data. A very common way to do this in the Microsoft world is to use Microsoft point-to-point -point encryption, or MPEE. So you may not only be using PPTP, but you may also be using MPEE to be able to have that information completely secure as it's going across the tunnel. And it's very simple to set up and very simple to use. Usually, you just provide a username and password, and now you're setting up the tunnel and sending traffic over that link. But it's been around for a very long time. You can find it on almost any device. And it goes way back to Windows 95 OSR 2 that came with a PPTP client built right into the device. And as long as we have had mobile devices, we've been able to use these types of tunnels to be able to send traffic back and forth to our central locations. A successor to PPTP is a newer protocol called L2TP. It stands for Layer 2 Tunneling Protocol. 
This is an update to PPTP, and it uses UDP port 1701 to be able to communicate. You would very commonly use IPsec along with the L2TP. The IPsec would provide the encryption once you've built the L2TP tunnel. Service providers often use this. It's a very common protocol to use. It's one that's built into a lot of different operating systems and mobile devices like iOS, where you'd simply add your L2TP configuration with a server account. You can even use multiple methods of authentication, such as an RSA secure ID or a separate secret value. And you can decide just to send certain types of traffic over that tunnel, or perhaps send all of your traffic over that tunnel. It's a very common way to build a tunnel, encrypt data, and send information from one site to the other.